This is a wonderful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I understand it. I hope you've been good to you and you've been able to see his favor in your life. You've been able to see his grace in your life. But God is an awesome God. I got to give honor to God. I got to thank God for being so good to me and to you. I got to thank Jesus for all that he did. And I got to thank God for this new nature that us as believers have in us through the power of the Holy Spirit that now dwells in you. And that is a blessing within itself. And that is a blessing within itself. I have a little message that I want to give you today. I hope it touch you and move you in a certain way. But yet this message is going to be about be a good steward of God. Be a good steward of God. So, you know, we should all work on being a good steward. But a steward, I want you to understand the definition of a steward. A steward is a manager or overseer. They understand being responsible for people, places, or things. They understand being responsible for different things. And if you are a steward of God, that means you are responsible for the different things of God. God has made you a steward as a believer. And if you will find out where I'm going to come from, it's going to be talking about the bishop in general. But, it, the, but the way that I see it, that it can be about every believer as being a steward of God, looking out for one another, taking care of one another, helping each other out, being, being, being ready to tell people why you believe what you believe. See, that's being a good steward for God, you know, being faithful, being, being dependable. Uh, all these things is the character of being a good steward. So we have to understand that we have to have some type of self-control, discipline within us in order to be a good steward, in order to be a good steward for God. So when the world see you, they can see the light of God and the light of Jesus in your life. For he said that you have became the light of the world. So if you became the light of the world, that means you cannot be like the world. Because if you be like the world, you can't shine. And I know one thing. Thing. If you're anything like me, you want to shine. You want that glow to be seen. That special glow that you can only get from God through the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's be good stewards. Let's be good managers. Let's be good overseers. You understand? For God. We're doing this for God and not for ourselves. We're doing this for the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. And then it said, when you become a steward of God, you do what you do what you do according to God's word. See, when you become a good when you become a steward of God, whatever you do, you do according to God's word is what I'm trying to say. Whatever you do, you do it according to God's words. We don't go outside of God's words because we know that we are a steward of God. And if we are a steward of God, the people should be able to see God in us. Understand that. And when you become a good steward of God and you do things according to God's word, that means that you will then allow, understand this, that means then you will permit the Holy Spirit to work in your life. You will let the Holy Spirit work in your life. And when the Holy Spirit is working in your life, that means you are letting the Holy Spirit guide you. That means you are letting the Holy Spirit guide you. And that's something we have to understand. We, 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 we got to let the Holy Spirit guide us. See, in order to follow the Holy Spirit leading, so you have to understand this. In order to follow the Holy Spirit leading, you have to be submissive to the Holy Spirit. First, you got to have faith in the Holy Spirit. Then you got to be submissive to the Holy Spirit. So that means you got to open up to the Holy Spirit. That means you got to receive the Holy Spirit within your heart and mind, then I mean you got to be humble to the Holy Spirit. And last but not least, you got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit leading. To the Holy Spirit leading. You got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit leading. So I say it again, in order to follow the Holy Spirit leading, you must, you must, ha you have to be submissive, open, 
humble in obedience to the Holy Spirit leading in order for the Holy Spirit to guide you and for the Holy Spirit to guide you. And when the Holy Spirit guides you, I want you to know this for a fact, that you will be a steward of God. You will be a steward of God. No matter where you at, you don't have to be the apostle, you don't have to be the bishop, you don't have to be the pastor, you don't have to be what we call ministers. All you got to do is follow the Holy Spirit and you will be a steward of God. You know, and you will be a steward of God. So one thing you have to stand about being a steward, about being a good steward of God, you must seek ye, you must seek the kingdom of God first. You must seek the kingdom of God first. And I want you to understand God's kingdom. I want you to understand God's kingdom. God's kingdom is God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God's words in the new covenant. The reason why I say God's words in the new covenant, because the old covenant was the prophecy about the new covenant. If you study it real clearly, you will understand that the old covenant, the old testament, it talked about the prophecy of Jesus Christ, who is the new covenant or who is the new testament so we have to follow that that's the kingdom that we follow god jesus the holy spirit and god's words in the new covenant so let's go to matthew 6 33 matthew 6 33 matthew 6 33 says but seek ye first the kingdom of god See, we have to seek the kingdom of God. That means we have to seek the power of God. And the, and the power of God is in his new covenant. So we have to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we don't, we seek the kingdom of God. We seek the power of God. We do all this. But then we have to live in the righteousness. And that righteousness comes through Jesus Christ. So he has a standard for us that is righteousness. But the righteousness is not based upon man righteousness. It's not based upon human righteousness. It's not based upon the moral, the, the, the law of the land righteousness, but it is based upon God's righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness. In his righteousness. That his is God's righteousness. It's God's righteousness. And all these things shall be added on to you. He was talking about the blessings of the above. But, but, but today, I want to give you an insight to let you know, this will, if you do this, this will help you be a good steward for God or a good steward of God. The relationship is steward of God or steward for God. Understand. So you'll be a steward of God. But in order to be that good steward, you really do got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. The reason why I bring that to your attention is because you got to stay connected with the kingdom of God. You got to stay connected with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God's word in the new covenant. You got to stay connected with it. That's why you got to pray. See, when you pray, that keep you connected with God. Uh, you understand? That keep you connected with the Holy Spirit. You got to pray. You got to be obedient to the new covenant. You got to be obedient to God's word. Uh, you got to have faith in the word. You got to be humble to the word. You got to trust in the word. You got to commit to the word. And all of this will make you a good steward of God. Believe me, all of this will make you to be a good steward of God. Now, how can you be a good steward of God when you're doing the things that's against God? That means you have nothing to do with God. That means you are an enemy of God. That means you are separated from God. But in order to be a good steward, of God, that means you got to stay connected with God. That means you got to stay connected with God. And how do you stay connected with God? By having a relationship with God. By having a relationship with Jesus. By having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. By having a relationship with the Word of God. And when you have a relationship with all that, that is seeking the kingdom of God and it's keeping you right. And when you do that, that's going to keep you as a good steward 
of God because you will be doing God's will and not your own, not your human will, not other people wills, not your wife will, not your husband will, but the will of God. And one thing I'm going to say about a husband and a wife thing while we're talking about this being a good steward of God, when you do be a good steward of God, guess what? You're going to, your, your husband is going to be good to your wife and, and your wives is going to be good to your husband. So when you be a good steward of God, I got to tell you, there's benefits in it. There's blessings in it. There's peace in it. There's joy in it. It's all good. There's nothing evil when you are being a good steward, a good steward of God. They are all benefits. They is all for your good. You have to understand that. So today, if you don't know nothing else, today work on constantly and always been a good steward of God so you can reap the benefits that come from being a good steward of God. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I am a good steward of God. Today, you are a good steward of God. And build on being the best steward of God that you can be in the name of Jesus. But I want to talk to you about some things that pertains to becoming a good steward of God. See, there's things that makes you a good steward of God. The first thing we talked about was seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You understand? In order to be that good steward of God. In order to be that good steward of God. But to be a steward, you must be faithful. And who you got to be faithful to? You got to be faithful to God if you're going to be God's steward. You got to be faithful to Jesus if you're going to be God's steward. You got to be faithful to the Holy Spirit if you're going to be God's steward. You got to be faithful to the Word of God if you're going to be a good steward of God. Uh, go with me to 1 Corinthians 4.2. 1 Corinthians 4.2. First Corinthians four two. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So he's saying if you're gonna be a steward, he said you gotta be faithful. You gotta be trustworthy. You gotta be dependable. You understand, all this is part of being faithful. You understand? You got to be able to count on you. You got to be responsible. You got to be committed. You understand, in order to be faithful. But he said, one of the requirements of a stewards, he used the word plur, he used the word plur in their stewards. He said, in order to do that, you got to be faithful. You got to be faithful. So if you find yourself not being devoted to God or being dedicated to God, which is all part of being faithful to God, learn to be faithful. Because when you be faithful to God, you will be faithful to others. Then you will be faithful to others. When you trust God, then you'll be trustworthy to other in the name of Jesus. So you have to understand when you build your life on the kingdom of God and you be faithful to the kingdom of God, you will be a good steward and the people will see the light in you. And then another thing about being a good steward is you have characters of a good steward. These are some of the characters of a good, a good steward is supposed to have. Go with me to Titus 1. Titus 1, verses 7 through 9. And I know it's going to be coming out of talking about a bishop, talking about a bishop, but I believe in the name of Jesus that that's the way all of us should be, that is a steward. 
These are the characters that we should have. These are the characters that we should be developing. And this is who we should be. And when we are that, we will be a good steward of God. And it says, for a bishop must be blameless. So understand this, you should be blameless now in the name of Jesus. So nobody be able to blame you for nothing since you've been serving God and you're growing in the Holy Spirit. You should become blameless, blameless as the story of God, as the story of God, even though he's talking about the bishop. I'm not going to twist the word, even though he's talking about a bishop. I believe all ministers, I believe all Christians, I believe everybody should be living on that standard right there. I believe everybody, because in some way or another, we are all stewards of God. Then you should not be full of self-will. It shouldn't always be about what you want, what you desire. It's not about that when you're being a good steward of God, because it's about God's will. And not soon the angry, which means not easily to angry or easily to be provoked. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have that in order to be a good steward of God. You shouldn't be angry. You shouldn't be an anger man. You shouldn't be a man that's full of anger. And you shouldn't be and you shouldn't be e easy to make ang to make angry because as you as you know anger will not fulfill the righteousness of God and if anger will not fulfill the righteousness of God, guess what? How can you be a good steward of God when you're going against God? Just something to think about. It's it's almost impossible. Then it goes on to say, not giving to wine, not giving to wine. So he's saying you shouldn't be a drinker, you know, you shouldn't be a drinker. Even though he tell us in this word, don't be a drunker. So I can say, don't be a drunker, not giving to wine, but he's saying they shouldn't even drink no wine. Then he goes on to say, then he goes on to be a good steward. You can't be a striker, you know, and a striker is a brawler or a violent person. So he's saying in order to be a good steward of God, you can't be harsh. You can't be a brawler. You can't be a fighter. You can't be violent. You got to be more of a meat type person. You got to be more of a kind type person. You got to be a more of a gentle person. You got to be a more of a generous person. You understand? You got to be a humble person. You understand? In order to be a good steward of God. And then he says, not giving to filthy lures. So you shouldn't be letting filth work in your life in the name of Jesus. But you should be a lover of hospitality. A lover of what is good. You should be a be a lover of hospitality. That's me be kind, respectful. You understand what I'm saying? A lover of what is good. You shouldn't even like what is evil. You shouldn't even want nothing to do with what is evil. The only thing that you want to do is to do the things that are good. You should be a lover of what is good. And then you should be sober. And sober deal with being righteousness and all this. But sober also means don't be a drunkard. Don't be going around getting intoxicated. Don't be going around getting high. Don't be going around getting out of your mind. Uh, he's saying you should keep a sober mind. You should keep a righteous mind. You should keep a sound mind. That's what he mean by sober. I'm trying to call, cover all the areas of a sober. And when you do that, then you can be a good steward of God. Then you can be a good steward of God. Then it says, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. Then you keep the word faithfully that you have been taught through the word of God. You keep it faithfully. You don't let no doubt come in. You don't let nobody take it from you. You just hold on to it faithfully, dependably. You just keep it there. You don't, you don't, you don't never let it go. Faithful, faithfully, faithfully, word, faithful words as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine or by sound teaching, both to encourage and to convince, both to encourage and to convince, both to encourage and to convince. So we should be able to, as stewards of God, we should be able to keep his word faithfully so that we can use it, so that we can use it 
for sound teaching so we can teach it without mistakes but we can teach it good and when we teach this word we teach it to encourage to exhort means to encourage and to convince and to convince them and to convince the gain slayers and to convince the ones that goes around speaking evil about the word of God we should be able to convince them to even turn around and come to God, but we should be able to convince unbelievers to even come to God. You understand what I'm saying? When you when you, when you when you look at the whole picture, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Then another thing about a steward of God's are not greedy. So in order to be a good steward of God, you can't be a greedy person. Go with me to Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Yes. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, and it said, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So he said, Let your conversation. When he's talking about your conversations, he's talking about your behaviors. He's talking about your conduct. He's talking about what's inside of you. So he said, let your conduct, let your behaviors be without covetousness. So he's saying, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Don't desire what nobody else can. You understand? Covetousness go covers to area. It's usually moved for greediness. Greed, when you hear covetousness, it's greedy. But greediness, but you hear the word covenant a lot of times just dealing with the desires of something else or lusting for something. But I'm going to use the word covenant. So, so don't be greedy and be content. See, he's talking about covenants. And then he said, and be content. So otherwise, he's saying, you got to learn to be content. If you want to be a good starter, uh, 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 good steward of God, you can't be greedy. And you got to learn to be content. And you got to learn to be content. So you got to be content with such things as you have according to what you already have. According to what you already have. Then you, then you have to remember, uh, 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 then he said, as you have, for he has said, for God has said, I will never leave thee or forsake you. He said he will never leave thee or forsake you. Take that to heart. When you know that God is never going to leave you or forsake you, that will even help you be a better steward because you know God is always with you, helping you to be the steward that he wants you to be through his Holy Spirit. Then it goes on to say, so that we may boldly say, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do to me. And I shall not fear what man will do to you. And when you're not operating out of fear, that will help you be a good steward of God. Because when you don't fear what man can do, will do for you, that means that you will stand up for God. Uh, that means you will stand up for Jesus. That means you will stand up for the Holy Spirit. That means you will stand up for the New Testament. That means you will be there firm and won't nothing stop you from honoring God and Jesus. You will be a steward. You will be an overseer. You will be a manager. You will be an encourager. You will be all what God what you want you to be in the name of Jesus. You have to understand that you will be a good steward. And then Galatians 3 23 my last verse I want to bring this to you yeah. Galatians 3 23 then in Colossians 3.23, I said this verse on several occasions, but I got to say it again. But it's cause something that you got to get down in your heart. You got to get it in the core of your heart and use it in your life. And whatever you do, do it heartily, completely, sincerely, 
as to the Lord and not to man. And you have to remember that, that you are not a steward of man's, you're not a steward of people, you're not a steward of flesh, but you are the steward of of God. Understand you are a steward of God and when you be and when you are a steward of God, whatever you do, do it heartily, sincerely, completely unto God. Completely unto Jesus. Completely unto the Holy Spirit. Completely unto the God completely onto the Godhead. You can't be short staffing when you want to be a good steward of God. When you want to be a good steward of God, that means you are dedicated and devoted to God. That means you are dedicated and devoted to doing God's will. You are dedicated to God and God's first in your life. And when God is first in your life, then Jesus is first in your life, the Holy Spirit is working in your life, and the Word of God is first in your life, you can't help but be a good steward of God. Hear me today. Today you know you are a good steward of God. Uh, we might have a little flaw here. We might have a little flaw there. But I want you to know today you are a good steward of God and process because we're going to continue to grow in Jesus Christ. We're going to continue to grow in the Holy Spirit. We're going to continue to transform to what God wants us to be until we get to eternity and spend it with the Father and the Son because the Word told me that Jesus is at the right hand of God so we're going to be up there with them or down here with them wherever the new heaven and earth is going to be at. I'll put it to you like that. That is where we're going to be. Understand that and say, thank you, Jesus. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus, for all the works that you do in my life. I would thank you for making me a, a, a making me one of your good stewards because I know that I wasn't able to do it on my own. But since I got my faith in you, I know that you will make sure that I be a good steward in you. But as long as I be obedient to you, I know I will be a good steward in you. As long as I follow your Holy Spirit leading, I know I will be a good steward to you and to you is God. You will be a good steward to God in the name of Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, I ask you to touch everyone that views this message. Heavenly Father, help them to continue to grow in your word. Let your words lead them and guide them that we learn how to listen more and more to your Holy Spirit and your Holy Spirit guidance. Heavenly Father, that we can have the confidence that we need to be all that you want us to be. But today, all I can say is thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything in Jesus' name. Have a blessed week. As you know, I'm on YouTube under Thomas Patterson. Feel free to go to my channel. Feel free to go to my channel, Thomas Patterson, under YouTube. And now you know I'm also doing some Twitter now. You can catch me on Tweet. And may God continue to bless you and have a wonderful week in the name of Jesus.